Welcome ladies and gents, Chris Andre here. You can find me at Bet Boxing on Twitter. Or of course, you can subscribe to the channel. Let's talk boxing. There has been a new development since the video that I uploaded this morning. This is what happens with news. It travels fast and things change quickly. And Tyson Fury is asking for 70% in the split with Alexander Usyk with a 1% deduction for every day that Alexander Usyk delays and doesn't sign the contract. Now, before we get into this, let me just say this. You know, the funny thing is... I've had a few comments from a few different people saying, you're biased, Chris. You know, you're clearly biased because you're British and stuff like that. When I say something nice about George Kambosos, I'm biased because I'm Greek, right? Now, all of a sudden, I'm no longer Greek. Now, all of a sudden, I'm British and I'm biased because I'm British. If I was to say something nice about Alexander Usyk, a comment that I've had in the past is because he's an Orthodox Christian. You can't win. You can't win. In fact, my favorite one ever, right? This is the best one ever. I pick Anthony Joshua to beat Deontay Wilder. If they were to meet and they were both at their peak, peak confidence, I'd pick AJ to beat Wilder. I think he's got better feet and would be able to come in close uh, more quickly than Wilder can adjust. And I think that Wilder, although he has a fantastic right hand, it does take him time to line it up a little bit. And I also think that on the inside, AJ's just superior to Deontay Wilder. So I think AJ would beat Wilder. I had one guy accuse me of racism for picking AJ, a black fighter, to beat another black fighter in Deontay Wilder, but it doesn't end there. I had another guy insinuate that perhaps I was actually racist against white people, because by picking Anthony Joshua to beat Deontay Wilder, what it really meant is that I was undermining the feats of Tyson Fury, who's a great white heavyweight. And as a result of that, what I'm really trying to do is undermine the place of Fury in history. You see, this is what you have to deal with as a content creator. If you pick AJ to beat Deontay Wilder, you're racist against both black people and white people. And this is the sort of mentality that people bring in to these videos. I'll have people that subscribe and I'll say, Chris, I've just come across your channel. So unbiased. Best analyst on YouTube. The things I've seen, I've watched videos since I've come across this one video. And I love the content. And the very next week, when they see another video where I'm critical of their favorite fighter, they'll start to say, you know what? I'm unsubscribing, man. You're biased. This is what you have to deal with on a constant basis. But what I do is I try to be the defense and the prosecution. And just like a jury member might be observing a particular court case, then a new piece of evidence is presented to them and suddenly mid court case, they change their mind. They say, ah, now there's a different element to this and it's made me alter my position. Well, something like that has happened here. As I was saying in the comment section of that last video, and do go and watch that video if you've yet to watch it. I've only uploaded it this morning because I'm not gonna go over every element again, but a lot of that stuff still applies. So do go and watch it again. But in this case, as I was saying in the, in the comment section down below, 60-40 to 50-50 was an acceptable bracket. Personally, I feel 50-50 is fairer. But 60-40 is not necessarily unfair, a position that Eddie Hearn took as well, who certainly there's no love lost between him and Tyson Fury. 60-40 is not unfair, but you're going to let greed get in the way of such a historic fight, a legacy fight, when you've already made so many millions and you're going to make tens of millions more. It's not like you're a pauper. So take it, Tyson. That was my position. The same sort of thing that was being implied by Eddie Hearn. Well, since then, coming out with 70-30 with a 1% deduction every single day, to me, it looks like Tyson Fury does not want this fight. Now, you can decide why. Like I say, I be the defense and the prosecution. I let you guys be the jury. Does he not want the fight because he's shook of Usyk? He's afraid. He's looking at Usyk and he's saying, you know what? I'm a good reader here of the talents of other fighters. I know what my strengths and weaknesses are. This style is going to cause me problems. I don't want the fight. Or maybe it's not quite as bad as that. It might be a case of, you know what? I could lose here. I still think I'd probably win, but I could lose. And it's a risk versus reward factor. And I'm not willing to give up that zero because fans are fickle. And as a result of that, I'm going to find a way to avoid the fight. That's still a duck. The third possibility, something that Hatman has alluded to, this could be a Mayweather-esque type of approach, whereby you think about timing. He's looking at Alexander Usyk. He's thinking, you know what? This guy's older. He's very reliant on mobility and foot speed, as well as footwork, in order to be effective. If we age him out a little bit, let him fight Daniel Dubois. Let him fight Hergovic after that. In the meantime, I'll take a couple of defenses, which I know I can win. He's going to age. There'll be a little bit more wear and tear. As he starts to slow down, I'll turn around and say, you know what? 
you guys have been busting me all this time to fight Alexander Usyk. I'm going to give it to you. Let's fight Usyk. He goes and beats Usyk when Usyk is no longer the guy he was, just like Floyd and Pacquiao. It doesn't matter whether you think Floyd would have beaten Pacquiao at any stage of their career. In the same way that it doesn't matter whether you think Fury beats Usyk now. The fact of the matter is, when Pacquiao had fought Floyd, he threw an average of 600 punches in that fight. In the three fights preceding it, he was throwing 800 punches a fight. In his peak, he was throwing 1,000. You're talking about a 40% reduction in output. Okay, and for a fighter who's about the force of nature, the, the output that he puts out there, that's a big reduction. Pacquiao was no longer the fighter he used to be. Now, again, that doesn't mean that Prime Pacquiao would have beaten Floyd. I'll let you guys decide on that. But it is still a smart tactical move to delay it, and it made Floyd a lot more money. Maybe that is Fury's motivation. Let Usyk age. People will demand the fight. They'll get thirsty for the fight. I'll make even more money than I'm making now. In other words, the motivation is let me weaken him and let me be greedy too. And if it affects legacy, so be it, right? Who knows what those motivations are? There are different possibilities there. I've given you three. Tell me if there's another one that you also see on the horizon. Whichever way you look at it, when you're demanding 70-30 with a 1% reduction rate every day he doesn't sign the contract, it looks as though you do not want the fight. Now, going back to the video I uploaded yesterday, or this morning rather, that doesn't mean that the things I was critical of Team Usyk about now no longer apply they still apply. For instance, I had Nate who was saying to me that he felt that the 0% offer was applicable to Saudi Arabia, the offer that came from the Saudis. But that doesn't make sense either because when the Saudi Arabians were not given a pot where they're seeking to turn a profit. This isn't a case of them saying, you know what, we've got 100 million here and we've got to find a way to make it spread out. We're going to spend 20 million on this and 10 million on that. Guys, you've got 70 million between you. You've got to figure out who's getting what between you. And as a result, here are the purse splits. It wasn't like that. They were basically negotiating with each individual separately and telling them, are you happy with this figure? Not percentage split. Are you happy with this figure? So this idea that they were getting, they agreed 50-50 and Usyk had agreed and Tyson Fury had not agreed. That doesn't add up with the idea of what the Saudis were trying to do. At no point have they sought to turn a profit. You have a pot when you are considering this is what we've got. And this is what we need to take into consideration when we're thinking about what we're giving out. Because these are our costs, these are our outputs, and these are our profit margins. The Saudis have never thought about profit. That's not their reason for doing this. They've got their 2030 vision. They're seeking to turn Saudi Arabia into a global sporting hub. And they are paying above the odds for all the events they're hosting. This is why everything's going to Saudi Arabia. This is why other nations, other markets cannot compete. It's not because they're looking at smaller profit margins. It's because they're looking at this and saying, we have a greater goal here. We have a different sort of investment here. So if Fury wanted more money than the Saudis were willing to give, then yes, that could of course lead to a breakdown of negotiations. But that's not going to lead to a situation where Usyk's told, listen, you know you wanted 40%, well actually, you wanted 50%, well actually Tyson Fury's demanding 60, so now we're gonna have to give you 40%. It doesn't work like that. It's not what they were looking to do. There was, an over, there was no overall pot. It was individual negotiations. So again, what Krasiuk had said at the time, not adding up, still applies. And additionally to that, whether Fury has decided to price himself out or not, and like I said, I'm not mincing my words. To me, it now looks like he does not want the fight. Despite that, when you are coming out and publicly saying, we're not accepting 60-40, well, you're not putting yourself in a great light either. It is possible for Fury to not want the fight and for Team Usyk to be too rigid and to be greedy. Both things are possible, right? Now, there is one last element of hope here. It could be that Fury and Usyk have gone higher than they're willing to go as an auctioning tactic or higher than they're actually willing to accept as an auctioning tactic. In other words, you've heard Usyk say, I want 50-50. You've heard Tyson Fury say, I want 70-30. In reality, maybe they are both willing to settle on 60-40. And this is part of the negotiating tactic. Whereas Fury had said, I want 60-40, maybe Usyk would have said, let's split it down the middle. Something I suggested yesterday or this morning and then made it 55-45 either way. And Fury would not have been happy with that. So with 70-30 and 50-50, if they split it down the middle with 60-40, that's all we can hope for. That this is yet another negotiating tactic and that by the end of this week, they will have agreed. If they do not, and the stumbling block is 
then to me it looks like Tyson Fury does not want this fight. I've suggested three possible reasons. Let me know what other reasons there could be in your opinion. Let me know if you disagree. There were a number of people this morning who were telling me, Chris, I think that it's Usyk that's being greedy and it's Usyk that doesn't want to fight. If you're one of those people and you still feel that way, make your case in the comments down below. Anyway, thanks for watching, ladies and gents. Please don't forget to hit a stiff jab on the like button, the right cross on the subscribe button, and uppercut on the notifications button. Thanks for watching. Chat to you soon. Take care. God bless.